everybody, welcome back. Live at Drew's house, Joppa Afternoon Drive. Hope you're all doing well out there. Exciting day today. We got ourselves another music show in our new report, NCM Hub Studios. Our guest today out of Haverhill, Massachusetts, the one and only Johnny Dupes. has been changing way on top the ridge did is getting cold hope the trees will block the wind did is getting dark now hope the trees will block some wind making noise The chassis wearing thin The seatbelts they won't buckle It seems the walls they're caving in The seatbelts they won't buckle It seems the walls are caving in Chassis wearing thin. The seatbelts they won't buckle. It seems the walls are caving in. The seatbelts they won't buckle. It seems the walls are caving in. Johnny Dupes in the house. First time on the show. Very exciting. How are you, man? I'm doing well. I'm doing good, doing good. Um, this is exciting. Good. We love having first timers on. You want? Do you have a chair for? Do you want to sit down for the interview part? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I know several people like to come in here and stand and play, but we usually let them sit at some point, which is <laughs> good, good. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Good. Welcome to the uh, studios. You like it? Sound okay in here? It sounds like a good sounding room, I think. It's a very, very good sounding room. Yeah. <laughs> so what's new with you? Tell, uh, first time on, you should probably tell people a little bit about yourself. You've been playing music for how long now? So I started playing uh, music as uh, an eighth grader and did that year's Battle of the Bands. Yep. And I've been playing ever since, so I'm 35 years old now. It's been a while. All right. Eighth grade, did you uh, pick it up on your own and just get curious, or did you have a mentor, or what? So I say eighth grade, but eighth grade was probably the year that I realized I wanted to play guitar. Yeah, yeah. I had a guitar um, maybe in the third or fourth grade, and then eighth grade it was history. Okay. Yeah. All That's right. when I realized I really wanted to... You know, play and play in a band and do that for yeah. for the future. I didn't know if it would stick, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and I, I'm very happy that I did it. Now we literally a lot of these a lot of these guys that come in, and I know better than you. We spent one night on Plum Island together, and we had some good talks, and we set this show up, which was good. And I kind of you told me a little bit, like a lot of our mutual friends. You know, he actually started playing guitar because he. Uh, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So I grew up with a, a lot of talented, a lot of guys that are now. Um, very talented musicians yeah they play out numerous nights a week um we even all have uh i mean not the same vibe but we all are pretty like soulful with our singing yeah um we like finger picking um it's it's cool though because we all came from like the same spot yeah um, and we all we play pretty well <laughs> what is it about this like uh because it, it is true I, I mean it to me it feels like slightly special in that regard like i, I was kind of new to newburyport like six seven years ago and we started doing this music show and i was mm -hmm. like all these people are playing 
around here. They're all from here. Like something in the water or something. I don't know. Yeah, it must be something we drank in eighth grade. You know? <laughs> yeah, that eighth grade water. That's right. Um, so you're playing. A, what's the? Uh, you're writing songs on a you know regular basis, or you would you say you try to stay so, writing all the time? So I went on a large hiatus playing music. Uh, I hadn't played out in probably six or seven years Man. Uh, until the end of last summer. I played a show, which made me actually join uh, one of my friend Patrick's bands. Wow. His name's uh, Patrick Hall, and he has a band called P. Hall Roots. Okay. And it's a group of guys that have been playing music for like probably closer to 15 years together. They do a lot of Grateful Dead stuff. They also write yeah. original music. Um, so this summer I've been playing pretty much next to him as a front man in that band, and wow. it's been really cool. What, uh, why'd you walk, was it burnout that made you walk away, or? I've always been a, a, a singer-songwriter. Um, I do play cover music, but uh, writing songs is really hard. Yeah. And when people expect that every time you're going to go out, they're going to hear a new song, Yeah. it's, um, it's rough on a guy like me. <laughs> yeah. So um, I took a, a bit of time off, and I actually learned how to play the guitar better without a pick. Interesting. And that has brought in um, new fluidity. It's brought in new ideas and yeah. stuff like that. Um, it was needed. I suggest anybody, if you play, um, you know, religiously with a guitar pick, to try to play without one for a while. Yeah. It might hurt your hand for a bit, but the sounds are completely different, and it's it's a it's a really cool thing. Why well, are you so you're picking around? Obviously, are you uh, to get that the when you get to the strumming sounds and stuff? Are you like using nails, or how do you uh, how do you it's get like, the really? So the difference majorly is like yeah. tone. So this yeah. is high and treble. When you when you then you can do it. Yep. Yeah. It's just different. I think honestly, it sounds better when you um. Almost a little, little more action there, almost. With I that. prefer it um, when you're playing. If I'm playing with a band, I obviously want to pick. Um, but if I'm playing alone as a solo gig, it's yeah. nice to have a little bit uh, depthier sound, a little lower end. Yeah. That's what that's what the booty shaker is. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the, the bass. There's a nice rawness to that too. Of, uh... I don't know. There's something about that that's cool. So do you prefer the uh, so the band kind of got you back at it? You like being the front man of this band, but are you, when it comes down to it, you like being on stage by yourself, playing your own songs. You're you like being a solo guy up there. It's really hard. Uh, <laughs> I I'm a solo singer and uh, songwriter, definitely at heart. But I've been I've been having so much fun playing with this band that I can't even answer that question. Yeah. I might I may like. Um, playing with the band and having ultimately more sound being projected yep because that makes me play better it makes my voice sound better it makes my my soul more into the music I yeah mean, don't get me wrong i can get myself into a song by myself but <laughs> yeah when you got a bunch of more you know your guys behind you that you get along with and they're rocking out it's a it's a different feel yeah no yeah so there's rewards it's easier to both. pass to the crowd too you know yeah not everybody's just you know infatuated or, or studying one person opposed to being able to see the diversity of your group, yep, which is like you know, to me, that's really cool. There must be. A, I've always thought it was cool, especially if you're doing the solo thing though, too, because it's like a lot of times some of those some of those solo rooms can be weird, and you know, it's like you said with a band, it's easy to get attention. You count it off and explode. Yeah. Sometimes with a solo writer, it's a little bit uh, different if you're just doing the singer songwriter thing. Do you appreciate? Do you like really love it though when you get like new new eyes on you? And uh, here's people that don't know much about me. They've never heard my music. Let's see if I can win them over with these uh, songs so from the heart. It makes me think of you when I met you a few days ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it ultimately, so what you're asking me is, do I like uh, if the, the crowd of people that enjoy my music get larger? Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, sharing music with people, um, the more people you share it with, obviously the more relatable it's going to be. You have a higher percent chance of it meaning something to somebody. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I want the world to hear it, you know? Yep. But even like, even if you don't think of like the exploding numbers, even if, say you're even just, say you got a room of 50 people and 45 of them are busy doing whatever, maybe they, maybe it's a bar or whatever, but if you win over the five people in that room that are completely into it, like that's got to be a rewarding feeling. It is. You know? I've had, I've had, so, whoops, so I play a lot of, um, this, this summer I've been playing a lot of uh, music at like more intimate style places like restaurants and stuff. Yeah. So people that go in to listen to the music, they don't necessarily um, go there for the music, but they walk in, they order their food, and it is happening. Yeah. So those type of people, I would feel like I know that they pay a little bit less 
um, attention to the music. Yeah. Um, but when you play an event or something where everybody's going there for the music, that's my favorite vibe. Yeah. They're standing there. They're not. If they're on their phones, they're filming it. Yep. You know. Yeah. TV's off. That sort of thing. Those mm-hmm. listen, nice listening spots. Yeah, those are my favorite too. I just like the whole idea of being focused on one thing. That's not. Uh, but whether it's uh, whether that whole room at that intimate place is packed with fifty people and only one person. Yeah. Is giving me the feedback of a listener, which is eyes, attention, clapping. Um, bob in their head. That's all it takes for me. Yeah, one person at a time. So I've heard mass. I've heard guys like uh, Neil Young and Dave Matthews yeah. and these guys that play massive places say that. Yeah. Like they're in these rooms with you know sold out arenas and stuff, and they're yeah. looking at. I've made contact with one person that night. It really did it for me. You know? Yeah, there's been plays. There's been times where you play you know pretty big show and you don't feel that much of a, you know, of a reflection through the crowd. But yeah. it's 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 all chance. Yeah, you know. Sometimes you play in front of 15 people, and it's the best show you ever played. <laughs> yeah. You know? Is there is there a uh, venue in particular around here that you really enjoy playing? That's uh, like just whether it be the sound or the crowds that can tend to show up, or um, the Middle East and Cambridge is ah. really cool. Um, yeah. I don't have plans to play there anytime soon, but I've played there before. Was that? Didn't I hear a story that was going away at some point, or that, at least rumored too? Are they trying to bring that? What's the deal with that? Uh, I actually don't have the information on it because <laughs> i they, love that place if they get rid of it that would be um a shame there's been tons of bands yeah. that have played there and be a massive stepping stone for their music career yeah i love that place i lived in brighton for many years and that was one of my favorite spots to go to actually one i remember one of the last times i was there i saw a guy named uh, jesse mallon play who was a little bit like a New Jersey kind of punk rocker, but he did like a he had a band there, and I remember he got us all down on the floor for a uh, song, like and you know that floor it wasn't exactly pristine. Oh yeah. And at some point, I think everybody was looking around at themselves, going, "We all sitting on this floor right now." Yeah. <laughs> Your white shoes were black. When right, home exactly. That night. In a good way, though, you know. I don't know. I hope he's doing well too. By the way, Jesse Mellon. I heard he had a a bad kind of a health issue there and was battling. So uh, if that ever gets back to him, I hope Jesse Mallon is doing okay these days. Um, but on a uh, lighter note, sorry. So you like the Middle East? What's, uh, I mean, how about like a Newburyport area? Like this scene, are you trying to kind of stay out of it a little bit because you're from here? Or? Uh, you know, um, no. <laughs> I'm trying to play anywhere that's, um, that people want to hear music. I like that And answer. it doesn't have to do with the size, the capacity, like we just went over, whether it's 15 people or, yeah. um, you know, a few hundred. It's music's mu- music, and it's not going to be put out there unless you take all the steps. You can't just go from, from zero to 100. When you walked away, do you find, because uh, I know in like other aspects of life, I were to like walk away from a job, I just naturally walk away from some people that were you know f- friends just by being mm-hmm. co-workers. Did, you, did that happen to you, or did you stay close kind of with the music circles? Or So I always played guitar off and on in my home. Yeah. Um, maybe like once or twice a week. Um, so that was always, I was always playing guitar. Yeah. But as far as playing out, um, I'm sorry, what was the question? Jane? Just did you like, I, you know, a lot of music friends, I just know naturally you bump into each other. Can you cover me for this? Music's can everywhere. You, I can't get away from You can't get away from it. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My friends are all, like like I said, a lot of them play guitar, a lot of them sing. Some of them play drums. Yeah. Um, it's a part of you now. Yeah. I'd say about 50, 60% of my friend groups are musicians. Oh, all right. Well, very good. It's uh, first time on, so let's make sure we get your music out there. You got another one for us? Yeah. Sorry about that first one. I was super nervous, but I'm ready to rock now. <laughs> you didn't seem nervous. Johnny Dupes here, live at Drew's House Job Afternoon Drive. A big thanks to our team once again, Maeve Power, the boss, Sarah Hayden, doing all their good work today. Johnny Dupes out of Haverhill, first time on the show. Take it away, my man. Not get down. And all I know is just what I've been told. Like strumming these six strings, cause it makes my feelings so hot and cold. Says it makes my feelings hot and cold. Makes me wanna go and drink a lot of Patron. Makes me 
grab a hold of my friends We're dancing now like this night doesn't end This is my fastest flow Yeah right, you definitely do not know That when I come I'm not alone You better line a few shots in a row I don't know what I've been told but I'm growing older Doesn't mean that we cannot get down And all I know is just what I've been told Like playing this guitar, it makes my feelings so hot and cold Says it makes my feelings so hot and cold Makes me wanna go and drink a lot of Patron Makes me grab a hold of my friends we're dancing now like this night doesn't dare Yes, this my fast flow Yeah, right, you do not know That when I come, I'm not alone Bit a lot of you drinks in a row And I don't know What I've been told Growing older, yeah, doesn't mean that we cannot get down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Dupes. <laughs> Nicely done. Johnny Dupes in the house, live at Drew's house, Chop Afternoon Drive, a music show from our NCM Hub studios here. Uh, it's funny, man. I was thinking of yours. You're like the most comfortable guy up there. You told me you were nervous. It's funny how nerves don't show with certain people. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You'll rewind. <laughs> you'll rewind the video, and you'll be like the first three questions I asked this kid. He was staring at the ceiling. Oh uh, really? No, yeah. yeah. You know, is it true though? Yeah. Um, go ahead, grab the chair too. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, get awesome. get comfortable. I don't want. Yeah, hey, uh, I think it's probably true though, right? And I think you've probably found this on stage that like the uh, you pro when you're feeling nerves, you probably a lot of times they don't show to the crowd. Like uh, there is some truth to that, right? Uh I don't know. I think you probably feel the most nervous out of everybody when that's running through your body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about just taking a breath and just relaxing. Yeah. It's the difference between, like, playing something in your bedroom pitch perfect every time. Yep. Going out, just a little extra blood flow will mess all that up. <laughs> it you is know, true, just... right? It's funny, man. I said the first night we met, actually, I, I don't usually do this often, but one of our mutual friends, uh, Alex Anthony, made me go up on, not made me, but you know, a couple of people were pushing me to go do it. I was like, what the hell? Now is as good a time as ever. I'll go play a song. And uh, I was like, oh, look out at the crowd. And you're like, I've never really done this before. This is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I was like, I had that feeling. You know, this is kind of... Uh, that wasn't the first time that you've played in front of a crowd. Um, yeah, pretty much. That was amazing. No, really. Well, so the you. difference between... <laughs> yeah. So when a musician sees somebody else do that, it's yeah. so easy to judge. Whether that musician's taken 20 years to get comfortable in a crowd. Yeah. You know as a musician... Like, there was numerous musicians in that room that night. Yeah. I guarantee you we all shared the, the same thought. Oh, that's very sweet. It takes a lot to get up and do that. And usually when someone does get up and do that, and they're not meant to be there, a lot of people, they know that they're yeah. not meant to be there. You sounded great. Well, yeah. thank you, Natural. man. That's very sweet of you to say. The, uh, but I always say, like, I, I was telling a, a friend this the other day, it's like, you know, you do the radio thing. It's like kind of a fake live. Yeah. You know, you know, there's people out there listening and, you know, however many, but you don't have to, like, stare down actual people in the face, which is what you guys do every night. That is a whole different animal. <laughs> it, is, it is a bit different. <laughs> Did you take getting used to that? Did um, it take getting used to, I guess, is the... So, yeah, yeah, being able to shed nerves and just not that, let that um, take away from your act is, is one of the biggest things in becoming a performer. Yeah. Um, even to this day, the most talented musicians in the world, I'm sure, have times where they say to themselves as they're checking their in-ear monitor and they're like, just calm down. Yeah. You know, so that's something that people, uh, you know, depending on mood, if you're in a really good mood and you, know, you have a lot of good, a lot of good people in front of you that... You really want to share a tune with like sometimes will make you feel that type of way yeah, yeah. that's why new music is a lot differently um executed than stuff that isn't new because you've done it plenty of times you know it's funny though i think that just hit a i was reading the morgan wallen review from fenway park the other day yeah and he kind of the globe kind of like killed him for uh you know singing the right notes at times kind of mm -hmm. bursted out of that bubble that sort of thing and then i'm thinking to myself like you know 
He's still fairly young. I think he's he's younger. I'm, he's, not, yeah, he's I'm not exactly young. sure how young he is, but I know he's younger than than us. And I'm just thinking about him, and I'm like, you know, I know this kid's a massive star, but it is Fenway Park mm-hmm. and three nights, and you're the headliner, and he's probably a little overwhelmed. Like that adrenaline must be pumping like crazy. Oh, like I, yeah. I kind of felt bad for him on the review. I'm not I'm not like the biggest Morgan Wallen fan in general, but you know, I did so, think the review was rough. <laughs> I don't know much about him, but I do know that his name is like a household name, kind of out of nowhere within the yeah. last few years. He's he's you know done a lot of things. So. Avoided some bad scandals too. That were, didn't avoid them. The scandals hit, but got through them. I should say. So he's obviously got a massive fan base because. You never know with that sort of stuff, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it was. I don't know. I was just thinking about that. The way you said that about the adrenaline too fast and calming yourself and the deep breath. I mean, that's probably all real stuff, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, um, who do you listen to these days? What's the uh, or, or maybe the influences? I mean, you can go all the way back if you want. Uh, I've always liked John Mayer. I've yeah. I've always enjoyed uh, Dave Matthews, um, The Grateful Dead. Um, Did Sublime. You, I like Sublime yeah. a lot. They're 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 really rad. Did you do the Dead and Co. Uh, show this time around? No, at the no, I didn't. I didn't. We had to. We ended up playing music that night. Oh, okay. We had like tickets to go, and uh, our band ended up playing music that night. That brings your two worlds together. There, the John Mayer and uh, Grateful Dead thing. When you, it's really <laughs> cool. It's yeah. Re- yeah, that's really cool. I'm not like a. Um, I'm probably a bigger John Mayer fan, than, but I, I like so many Grateful Dead songs. I'm just not a Deadhead. It's like you know, some people are just you know all in on the dead and that's never quite been me but I like so much of their stuff I went to that Fenway show and it was really cool for me to hear um, all the love that John Mayer was getting from the, like he had completely won that diehard fan base yeah. over which is not an easy thing to do you're going to step into Jerry Garcia's shoes yeah big shoes to fill <laughs> yeah man you know like in a seemingly de- I mean I'm sure there's still some people that are like you know never going to be the same and obviously it's never going to be the yeah. same it's just different you know so know. what I think helped was Older music and newer music always has like a, a differential when it comes to um, the the people that it draws in. I think John Mayer jumping in to that band that has been well and established as a almost like a uh, he's like a mar- more modern act put into that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yep. Stud. You know what I mean. He's a handsome dude. Like, uh, yeah, it's an, an added front man that's half the age of the guys that are in there. Yeah. Now you got you know. 20 year old females that were never even interested in the band probably showing up and buying tickets yeah and, and like, they're not silly in in the fact of they know how to uh sell but i mean th- i'm not underselling that they also know how to make great music because they do yeah it seemed like they all genuinely love playing with each other too which yeah you know, i mean i don't think long tours like that last when you don't right mm-hmm. you know I, I hear being in a band is easy is that not <laughs> uh i mean when you got a group of guys like the guys that i yeah. have yeah but every other band that i've ever played with it's just it's tough to mesh everything um it's a big machine and you got to keep it you know the wheels greased so everything yeah you know, turns and moves yeah my i remember uh one of my guys is, is springsteen and i remember in his book he talks about how it's like this is like the only profession in the world where like you go to high school with these kids and then you like grow up into adulthood and then all these years later if you still have a band it's still those same people that know all your high school secrets and you know he's like it's bizarro world you know it's like a hard thing he's like and you gotta stay alive too which is another thing bands struggle with you know so it's i don't know it's interesting hearing him say it that way uh he's with the same guys that he kind of grew up with in jersey so i don't know it's, i always think of band he's right band life is not easy <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you loving your your band right now. The do you, uh, you guys have a lot of shows coming up right now? I know we're getting into the fall. Still, still a very popular time to be playing music. So we're playing tonight at. Uh, we play every Wednesday at this place in Shane's. Uh, in Shane's, it's actually a place in Hampton. It's called Shane's Barbecue. Okay. They uh, during the COVID times they built a pretty um, modern outdoor astroturfed muraled bar. Okay. So. Um, it's like an outdoor venue, and it's really cool. It's really bright. The pictures come out great. Was it a COVID thing they decided to keep? Were they not planning they on kept, it? They kept it. Yeah. And, uh, it's like really cool. There's when, so much of that. So on Wednesday nights when it's nice out, we actually set up at the Insta Bar backyard, it's called, and that's behind Shane's. And okay. that's, uh, I enjoy that a little bit better than playing inside because of the vibe. Yeah. It's just really cool out there. You know? So that's like a Wednesday uh, residency that's for you guys right now? That's a Wednesday residency thing. Uh, we got a couple more weeks left. Um, 
It starts at six o'clock, goes to nine every Wednesday. Nice, man. Cool. So if anybody's in that area or even uh, from this, like, if you're in Newburyport right now, that's a quick ride. Let me tell you, we do it all the time. So there's a lot of great music up there. I will say people, um, you know, everybody goes to Hampton Beach for other reasons, you know, beach, casino, all that stuff. I always go for like the music. There's always the, it's say, I don't even care if you like the restaurants or whatever, but they're good to musicians up there, it seems yeah. in general, like as far as giving them a place to play. I don't, absolutely. I don't know all the inside baseball, but, uh, yeah, I've always liked that about it. It seems like you can find live music at any time, which I'm a fan of. Um, let's do let's do one more and bring it back, if that's cool with you. You got another one in your back pocket? Yeah, I do have another one in my back pocket. Um, this one is actually going to be a little bit different, though. All right. Again, Johnny Dupes joining us out of Haverhill. Uh, big thanks to our team here, Sarah Hayden, Maeve, uh, Sarah Hayden, the boss, Maeve Power, doing everything really for this show i'm looking around sometimes our team is uh bigger and smaller than others and uh today it's a bit of a small but mighty team as i always say and uh mave has just done a great job since taking over this show here a few months back and uh i always say i'm not the easiest to work with i <laughs> bother her with scheduling and all that stuff so thank you Maeve, for all the great work i never get a chance to really say that as much as i should on the air but uh thank you to her and thank you for doing the setup and all that you got to meet Maeve for a little while before i even got here today she's great isn't she Maeve was very, very good to me. <laughs> she was awesome. She's she good to everybody. To good to everybody. All right, what's this? You want to intro it? What's this one called, or you want to just play it? Your call. Uh, this song is called Walk My Way. Walk My Way. All right. Johnny Dupes, live at Drew's house, Joppa, afternoon drive. at Drew's house. Job afternoon drive. Beautiful, man. Sounds great. It's the first time I've actually got to actually hear you, you know, I heard you play out once, but uh, this is just so nice sitting down and uh, spending some time with you here in a room like this. It's beautiful, man. You sound great. 
one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, man. I tell everybody all the time, I am so spoiled. Like, you know, these guys do all the hard work and making us look good on when it's all said and done. And I just come in and talk to interesting people and listen to music. It's kind of an easy job, you know? Yeah, you got the gig. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I played it well. Man, very cool. Well, this has been a pleasure, man, hanging out with you. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the stay here to this point and uh, could we get to book you in for another one too can we make sure once we have somebody yes. on that we really like we make sure they come on a second yes, time yes I would love to do it again we try to hit you know kidnap you before you uh, we commit you to a second show before anything else um, also first time guests we have to do a rapid fire with you you cool with this first thing that comes to your mind for the answer you're just gonna say it. let's go alright it's pretty we'll start easy pretty easy stuff get to know you a little bit favorite food uh dude are you gonna do this thing yeah there's so much there's so many answers <laughs> to that there's one first thing one? first thing just to mind one? Um, grilled chicken. There you go. Had that last night. Favorite uh, favorite movie. Uh, you're doing. Uh, I say they're easy, but they're not all easy. No, none of them. That's <laughs> not even. Right. I don't even know what I'm gonna say. You can go um, back. You can go back to it. Favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original. Original. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Favorite class in school. Math. Favorite teacher. Miss Cavallaro, she was uh, Spanish. Spanish teacher. Spanish teacher. Yeah, okay. Is that because you kept going with Spanish afterwards, or you just liked her approach? Yeah, I ended up being in like a sophomore Spanish class when I was a freshman. Okay. I don't know how, it, I think they messed up, but I just went with it. It's the one thing I took Spanish. I always wish I continued it into like adult life. Oh, no, that was junior. I was a, so as a freshman, I was in a, a junior Okay. Uh, Spanish class. <laughs> I think fun. it was a mess up, but I just played it out. <laughs> you like the, the teacher. All the people in, uh, so... All the 11th graders knew my sister. My sister was in 11th grade. Everybody was just like, yeah, your brother's in our class. Okay. Like, That's going to be a mess up. He's not that smart. So. <laughs> How many siblings? One. Just the older sister? One sister, Jocelyn, yeah. Th that makes it easier, right, going through yeah, school? Yeah. It's always, yeah. I, th yeah. I, I had a younger sister. I was like, I made it easier for you. Okay. Yeah. I got in all the trouble, and then you had yeah. it easy. Um, <laughs> that's funny. The childhood was, was a little bit rougher with her. She wanted me to play, play house, you know? She uh, all yeah. those things, like... You know, no, you're over there cooking, and I'm like two years younger than. Yeah, Look yeah. At it now I'm like, jeez, I was like your butler back then. Pretend. <laughs> Did she support the uh, guitar when you started bringing it out? Yeah, she's one of my one of my biggest fans. Yeah, that's always cool. It was, and I'm sure she told you once or twice to shut up. I'm trying to do my homework, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, favorite, uh, best show you've ever played, whether it be the crowd that night or just whatever happened. I don't know. What's the best show that comes to mind you have ever played? The best show that I have ever played was at McGurk's in Hampton mm. when I was 23 years old. That place gets rowdy. So it only fits like 80 people downstairs, and we had like 100 people, and we knew every single one of them. We invited all of them. <laughs> it was a rocking crew. That Spilling night. out onto the street. I'll remember it forever. And it was such a small, like, like we went over earlier, it doesn't matter the size of the venue or the yeah. capacity because... You know, we've played some good shows at Wally's too. Yep. Like pretty, pretty packed houses over there, opening for, you know, other bands. There you go. So there's the Hampton scene again that we uh, we talk about a lot. That's very good. What's the, um, what is the best career professional advice you ever received? Um, if you want to stand out playing the guitar, then work as hard as you can to sing and play guitar when learning guitar it's very natural to just want to play the guitar but when you do both of them mm. um it makes you feel 10 times better than just doing one of them yeah i know i, I I've, that's a good piece of advice i think i know a lot of people who are like i can't i can't i'm great guitar players there's a million good guitarists that can't there. sit that won't I mean, there's sing probably a good there's probably a million good singers so, yeah. and guitar players out there because of how big the world is but there's a lot more um, there's a higher amount of just guitar players in the world than there are people that yeah. can, you know, play guitar and I mean, sing I, well. I know people who will play, be the best guitar player at a campfire of 12 guitar players, and they, and won't, then, and they won't sing at the campfire. Yeah, it's, it's like, come on, you've got to have something. It it's usually how it goes. It's crazy. Um, Johnny, can I ask you to actually play one, play us out too with one if, uh, if I stall yeah, here for one awesome, second? Yeah. I know you, uh, I just kind of want more, to be honest with you. I guess that's the reason why. Do you want me to play <laughs> a... Uh, a just yeah, a keep cover it. tune, a no diggity. No, I'll keep it original. Or just keep it original. Yeah. Wow. You know, actually, I'll tell you the reason for that afterwards too. We actually, because uh, I don't want you to get shut down. Sometimes oh, true. we're so big, people 
will oh, yeah. <laughs> it will shut us down sometimes. Oh, so I'm actually in some crazy tune right now, but I got one perfect. I'll play it in this tune. You got okay? a perfect. All right, let's end it there. We're gonna do uh, say thanks to Maeve Power putting the show together. Thank you so much, Maeve. Great work as always. Sarah Hayden, the boss. I never said that enough to those two, as I mentioned. So thank you guys for doing all the hard work. Johnny Dupes, first time on the show. It has been a pleasure out of Haverhill. So much fun, man. Thanks for coming on. about things now But I'm on my way I'm figuring them out And I may not know much about things now But I'm on my way I'm figuring them out Changing of seasons has come and gone, and all that we're left with is just what we want. The summertime's here and it's hot. I'm plugging these strings, exchanging these things, or showing how this may sound like that. And when I get off. I'll get back It's changing of seasons Come and they go like The rain and the snow A sunny day can become Purple and hazy Where I'm from And I still go seasons has come and gone and all that we're left with is just what we wanted winter's near now and the ground is frozen over and all that we're left with are these footsteps in the ground (laughs) 